Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to the channel. Happy Friday, and I hope you've all been having a really amazing week. In eight hours, I am going to be doing our weekly collective reading and check-in. So if you do feel guided to join me at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time later today, there will be a live premiere of that collective reading. So I do invite you to tune back in then. And of course, I do channel those collective readings every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with an extended version on Patreon. But in between those readings, I like to do what I sometimes call mini readings, which aren't always so many because a lot of times they do end up being... 20 or 30 minutes long, but I wanted to come on and do one such reading here. So I'm going to start by shuffling the energy oracle cards and just seeing what messages want to come through for us today. So from the love word scramble, we have the words exciting and conversation. So there may be someone connected to you energetically who is either really excited about having a conversation with you in the future. Maybe the two of you have plans to speak or to meet up. For others of you, this could be someone who is excitedly thinking about a conversation with you that's already happened. Of course, time doesn't exist at the level of energy, so these messages can relate to your perceived past, present, or future. Okay, so who is this person excited about a conversation? So this person is, I'm hearing they're your opposite. I'm not sure why that's coming up here. You may actually have a lot of I don't want to say mental conflicts with this person, but almost like banter back and forth or differing of opinions, differing of belief systems. I'm getting that you and this person think very differently, but the thing is there's kind of a playfulness in all of that. There's a warmth in all of that. And I'm hearing that's actually because you do have a soul connection here. So this person is part of your soul family, meaning that they share a similar core soul frequency to your own. Now, of course, if this is a twin flame situation, that would be a person that shares an identical frequency to your soul. So take that as it resonates, but I am getting this is a soulmate or a twin flame. And this seems to be someone that you, again, have very opposing personalities or belief systems. There's something very opposite about you in the physical 3D world, and yet there is this underlying bond and this warmth beneath the surface because of the deeper soul connection you share. It's almost like your souls recognize the illusion of your personalities they almost see your belief systems, your personality, your ideas, who you are in this lifetime as just this temporary mask that you put on as a soul incarnating here on earth. But there's this shared mutual awareness that there's something deeper here that transcends that mask that goes far beyond those beliefs, ideas, or personas this is a very deep connection coming through here. And even though this is someone coming up as very logically minded, they can't explain away the natural sense of warmth, but also similarity. It's like this person feels as though the two of you are very much alike, which doesn't make any sense because on the surface, you actually look or appear or believe very differently. But this similarity is actually much more core level. This is about that soulmate bond that we were talking about. This is related to the fact that you actually share a very similar energy. And I'm hearing that you both would identify as old souls. You've both 
had this vibe about you where from even a young age, you may have appeared as wiser or older or more mature than your peers or the people around you, even sometimes the adults around you. And this is because you do have this spiritual wisdom from having lived so many lifetimes and so many different places and points of view in those lifetimes. Okay, so let's get a little more information. For some of you, this could be a platonic soulmate. For others of you, though, I am getting a romantic element here as well. Although if there's a romantic element, I'm getting something about it may actually be hidden at this time. I got the words third and opposite from the love word scramble, which by the way, for those of you who are new, the love word scramble is a tool I use to channel specific words, names, details, etc. from the readings. So as I always say, always use your intuition and only take what resonates here with you. But that word opposite is just coming out as a confirmation of what we've been saying regarding this person being like your opposite, but then there being this similarity at the soul level. With the word third, I did hear something about a third party. This won't be for everyone, but there could be some kind of third person involved here. And that might be why there's a hidden element to the romance. If there is a romantic element here, it seems that when I say it's hidden, this may mean it's even hidden from someone's conscious mind. So this person may be trying to hide it from themselves. Wow, I'm getting chills all over. Such a powerful spiritual energy coming through this reading, but I almost feel as though this person is trying to hide how they feel about you, even from themselves. So they're trying not to even let their own conscious mind realize how deeply they're feeling about you. Okay, so can I get some more details on this? How is this person feeling? Okay, so man holding a coin up writes, can I get some clarification? You are really pulling on this person's heartstrings, and I'm hearing without even trying. I don't get that you're necessarily trying to pull on this person's energy or impact them, but they feel as though you have such a hold on them. It's coming up as a trance. They feel like you almost have them in some kind of trance where they can't break out of their mesmerization of you or how they're feeling about you. But again, this isn't something that you did intentionally. This has simply been the impact of being in your presence. They really feel as though you have their heart, even if that's something they're trying to hide from themselves. They know way deep down that you have really taken their heart here. And part of how they know this deep down is because you're taking up so much space in their mind, so much of their attention. There is this energy of being very fixated on you, but for some reason, there's a conflict internally within this person. It's almost as though they're trying not to be fixated upon you. There may be someone else in the situation that they don't want to hurt emotionally. So this could be a karmic third party. They just have this sense that they're in a very delicate situation or that how they're feeling is better left repressed. And yet they're not able to really leave these thoughts and feelings about you alone. So it's putting them a very in a very complicating kind of emotional situation. I'm hearing this is emotionally precarious. That's how this person is feeling. Now, I will say the very interesting thing about what's happening in this person's third eye chakra, which is very often the center of where an awakening spiritually will occur, there's a lot of activity in this person's third eye chakra. I saw the image of an earthquake, like how you'll get seismic activity prior to an earthquake. For this person, it's almost like they're getting energetic activity in their third eye chakra that is indicating there is about to be an earthquake in the form of them going through a very intense upheaving spiritual awakening. And with 
door to spirit and magician and the mirror upright, this awakening they are about to go through is directly connected to the spiritual connection they're sensing on a deeper level with you and how that's actually awakening them to this other aspect of their own self. I have to say I'm getting now in the reading a little bit of a twin flame energy, although that doesn't have to be the case for everyone. But for some of you I'm picking up, it's almost like if you are the divine feminine listening in here, it's like you are the physical embodiment of this person's internal divine feminine, energetically speaking, and they are beginning to sense that at some level. And so it's actually kind of awakening their inner divine feminine, their inner emotionality, their spiritual side. You are mirroring back something very powerful and telling to this person. I'm hearing you've touched their heart in a way that mirrors back to them their true, softer, innermost self that they heavily keep under wraps. So you may have said or done something towards this person that was very kind or warm or affectionate, and this shared a kind of beautiful energy with them that is clearly mirroring back to them the kind of love that they themselves hold in their heart except that love within them seems to be a little bit locked up. As I said earlier, it's almost like they're trying to keep it under wraps to come off a different way because of how they think they are supposed to appear or present themselves to other people physically. But deep down, they have a very soft and compassionate heart and they saw or observed something that you did or said that touched their heart in that way that reflected back to them their true nature that they don't often express. So can I get some more details about this? Yeah, and somehow the way you touched this person's heart, although you may not even realize the way that this thing you said or did impacted them, but you touch this person's heart in such a way that is actually profoundly healing and opening them specifically in the heart chakra. So how is this person healing, shifting, or opening their heart chakra? I'm hearing they're going within for their healing with door to personal healing and happiness in the reverse position. Can I get a clarifier for this card? Okay, the woman holding a coin reversed. So this is very often my karmic feminine card. So if this person is coming up as a masculine energy in some kind of karmic relationship with a feminine that they may not want to hurt emotionally, that might be on their mind at this time. I'm seeing that they are doing some kind of deep internal healing apart from this person or this connection, meaning this karmic feminine is completely unaware of the way in which this masculine is healing or shifting shifting themselves and also this journey of personal healing seems to be happening entirely apart from or separate from this karmic feminine it is highly personal and highly individual in nature and they may even feel as though this journey is something they can't openly share or talk about with this particular feminine energy we did get rest and rejuvenation upright, so I'm hearing the word processing very strongly. The mode that I see this masculine currently in is as though they're processing a very intense energy, again, something that deeply touched their heart space. And it's almost like it was so overwhelming to their energetic system that they've needed some time and space simply to allow the energy to settle, to kind of process what they've been thinking, feeling, or how it's been affecting them. Now, I will say that for some of you, they may be also trying to take space, thinking that possibly if they do take this space away, those intense feelings will pass, or maybe if they just give it some time and space, they'll be able to keep those feelings under wraps without needing to address them, that maybe they'll just go away. But I'm getting from the guides here that the opposite is actually going to occur. So 
the more this person takes time and space away from you or away from this connection, the more they're going to recognize that these feelings aren't going anywhere, that they're still lingering, that they're really staying constant beneath the surface. So I am going to pull some more messages about what this person is really thinking and feeling, especially since you've had some kind of really profound impact on their heart space. I just keep hearing that you touch this person's heart. But before we get into those messages, I also want to share with you my personal most powerful tool for manifesting in my own life. And these are subliminals. Subliminals are audio meditations that contain unconscious spoken affirmations, And these affirmations are embedded within other sounds, tones, and frequencies, which is so powerful because it allows them to bypass the conscious filter of the mind and make deeper, more lasting impressions on the subconscious mind, which research has shown it's actually our subconscious mind that controls 95% of our thoughts. So of course, by the law of attraction, where our thoughts manifest our reality, When we shift 95% of what is happening in our mind, we can shift our energy exponentially faster than with other manifestation techniques. And I've seen this at work in my own life. I've been using subliminals for several years now, and I have seen the most powerful results, shifts, and changes in essentially every area of my life. So I am now sharing my own library of subliminals through my app sound and soulful and as you can see on the screen on this app i have over 100 subliminals for every area of life and when you sign up for a seven day free trial account in the app you can create your own custom private playlists You can listen in eight different background sound options, and you can even read the affirmations while you are listening. Specifically for this reading, I would most highly recommend my subliminal called Love Magnetism because this is designed to release any energetic blockages to unconditional love, allowing you to really re-magnetize your energetic field for attracting in the highest vibrational outcomes and opportunities, not just romantically, but in other areas of your life as well, because that energy of unconditional love is so incredibly powerful and magnetic. So if you do feel guided to it, the link to download my app and sign up for a seven day free trial account is in the pinned comment and description box underneath this video. Okay, so how is this masculine feeling or thinking beneath the surface? And I heard the word guilt. So they may be feeling guilty because they've been feeling like they want to walk away from something, but whatever that thing is seems to be highly dependent on this person in a material sense. So for example, this could be a job that they want to walk away from, but that's very dependent on their work. This could be a friendship, a family member. For many of them though, this is a karmic feminine in their life that is highly dependent on them. And they've been thinking about walking away from this situation, but feeling a great deal of guilt here as well. Okay, so what else can I channel here? Yeah, they've been feeling like they want a new beginning that is really aligned with true, deep, emotional intimacy and connection. I'm hearing that it's been a while since they felt strong attraction to much of anything. And they chalked this up to simply being the mundane nature of daily life or possibly just part of time progressing or part of growing up. But you've summoned within them feelings of attraction and pull and excitement and chemistry that again they've not felt towards any person thing or idea in a really long time and this is making them strongly desire that 
new beginning in their life that contains that level of passion and attraction, but they also recognize that there is some kind of individual healing or shifting that they're going through. And subconsciously, they realize this is something they may have to go through on their own. They may also feel a little bit guilty because if there is a karmic feminine in their life, they recognize that they've been kind of hiding that process from this person, that they've not really been open about the way that they are changing either emotionally or energetically because they just feel as though that karmic person wouldn't understand. But the reason that they feel this person wouldn't understand is because they don't share the same deeper spiritual connection that they have with you. Again, whether that's a soulmate or a twin flame, something that they've, some way they've interacted with you or a conversation they've had with you has opened their mind. And this opening of their mind actually may be something they've not uttered a single word about to anyone. And this may even include you. Although they do feel you're someone they could talk to or open up to about this, I do feel that, again, there's almost this sense of almost hoping that they won't have to face these feelings, hoping they'll kind of just go away on their own. Because to face this door opening within their mind that is causing them to question so many of their past choices, so much of what they believe to do this would be extremely disruptive to their daily physical reality. So I do see them very resistant to doing that, but ultimately they're going to have no choice, but to face these truths that are coming up within them, these changes that are happening within them. They do seem to be getting very in their head about this for the time being. And intuitively, you may even be able to sense the conflict between this person's overly logical mind and their awakening third eye chakra, because we actually have the thinking man card, which I take to be a card of ego sitting on the third eye, where I said there was a lot of that seismic activity where their third eye is actually really opening, but at times there may be an internal conflict there as well. So, wow, very interesting messages coming through this reading. I am going to be closing with one final roomy oracle card. Of course, if my energy resonates with you, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, join our beautiful community of like-minded, conscious, creative beings here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram at Magnetize Yourself, where I post more energy updates and inspiration. And the Rumi Oracle card to come out here is Enter the Garden of Delights. There is a sweet spot when entering the Garden of Delights, a moment where the senses have gorged themselves upon beauty and become heavy with their fullness, slowing the mind so that it can perceive the Divine Beloved dancing behind the veils of nature. You have been granted entry into sacred space, a sanctuary for worship. When the soul is well acquainted with love, life becomes a temple of love, a sacred space in which the soul can grow powerful through expansive worship of love. You are being invited, being invited into what is unknown, out of what is familiar and comfortable to tussle with the parts of us that would deny aliveness is a natural part of growth. But the greatest risk of all is of never really and fully being born into this world of wonders. So that feels like a beautiful place to close the reading. If you do feel guided to it, the link to download my subliminals app, Sound and Soulful, is in the pinned comment and description box underneath the video. Otherwise, I am sending you all so much love today. Have a beautiful day, and I will connect with you here again in the next video.